Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we? From, uh, um, Johnny Mango. Oh, yeah, Johnny Mango, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, old, 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 the mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Adge Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah. It was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was, uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Uh, apples and jams. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, what, is that true? Who I, knows? I, 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 JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope the Mango Boy's not having yeah. a laugh at me. Is that true? Jo uh, one of the words was died by tractor. <laughs> Did he, is, is that true? Could you imagine? Oh, God. If, right, say if, like, you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. And you, c you kill someone, you go, oh, God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look and it's someone famous. <coughs> yeah, or Adge Cutler. <laughs> Yeah, go on, what was your point? <laughs> no, it's just like, not Terrifying, only, yeah. it's like you've killed someone, then you look. But I've I mean, all, yeah, I know what you mean, actually. And what that makes is, it even worse? And what, what makes it even worse, they were rich? Yeah. Oh, no, that would be... No, but say if it was someone who's, like, really big in the world. No, that is a good, I quite like that, it's an interesting point, though. Oh, that's your bag, no wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well, as Bono <laughs> said. Did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just- Is that under there, Rick? Sorry, sorry about this, I'm not- I'm not ignoring- this is getting a bit slop sloppy, you know? No, 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 it's not, no, no, no! No, no it is, Rick, it's getting it? sloppy! It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here, cos we went to, um, this award ceremony in the week, um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, yeah. let me- I have to explain it to Carl, cos, uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the- it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for, uh, Television and Radio Industries Club annual awards, right? We'd it's never heard of it either. We'd never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio, uh, industry club. Right. That's yeah, that's the clue, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so, um, but uh, we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing and they really made an effort and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours. Before we had fun. to sit down. And, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I mean, literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV radio industry names, on-screen talent, behind-the-scenes people. People. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um, Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so it, it, the, the voice comes on and says, "Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the president, the, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards." And we had to g stand up. All of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation as he walked to his table to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No, he's the president, and he came out. He told a few gags, sort of like it was like straight away. It was. You know, old school stuff. You want to thank the ladies because you know it was nothing without the ladies. All the lovely ladies here, and we're waiting for a joke. No, nope. <laughs> just, th just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace before we ate. Right? It's me. It was me, Steve, and Ash. You know, our producer, the little um, disabled fella. Right, and he's he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. We're, you know, we're, we're we're standing up during oh, no, grace. Can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, <laughs> and um, sorry, did we bore you? <laughs> <laughs> You just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who's yeah. in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said blah blah blah, and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, "What's happened to you?" They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So yeah. Oh. You're, you're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> so go on. <laughs> and uh, Tom O'Connor, he said, uh, uh, "Thank you, God, for." We thought this yeah. was a joke initially. We thought it was going to be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's why. We, that's why we were laughing. Out loud. <laughs> that's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> <laughs> we went anyway, and then he went. I thank you for this. Uh, and uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went. What about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, "I've never been. I've never been left out of grace before." <laughs> so, but we had to. And we had to have kind of like bowed our heads slightly, you know. And uh, did we say amen? I know that we were sort of. A lot of people did. I'm pretty sure. Cliff, I, didn't. I think, probably ch chimed in there. Yeah, and he so, sang it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so but before again, you see what Ricky's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage. This guy walks up there, I don't know who he is, says, there's a lot of people here this city this afternoon, you know, it's a wonderful uh, event, but of course there's a load of celebrities as well. He says, thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up. And then he went, table 77, Mr. Russ Abbott, and we all round of applause. We, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. I'm um, absolutely brilliant. He looked like, uh, a bit like, um, uh, Barrett Holmes, <laughs> this hilarious Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went, table 107. The cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. And then he went, <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. Clap. Slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, when is this gonna- uh, He went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, 
a hundred. Table fifty-three. John Inman, everyone. It's John Inman. Round of yeah, applause. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, table seventy. Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo. Yeah, there was there was booing no. there, and yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, there was a joke, ironic booing, I think. Could the cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> and we didn't I, see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show when they went up. They won an award. Cowell and uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, forty-three. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we we kind of legged it upstairs and we're uh, watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> <laughs> empty and it was chairs. Empty. <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But, uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, cos Sir Cliff was giving out the, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he uses his speech, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford, right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I don't know what it is she's done, I Gloria Hunniford. I don't she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done Radio 2, so I don't think that's We're not dissing her, we're not dissing no, anyone. Good luck we're to not her. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know. Uh, but anyway, it was she... just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad lib a speech, right? And I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Kyle, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, Actually, she's been there for a long time. Yeah, she, and it's like I was thought she was going. She doesn't call. You yeah. do that. You get a blue Peter, and this is how she. <laughs> we thought she was going to get award. photos out, maybe start showing it. it no, was it, was just very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and uh, you know everyone there. Henry Cooper was there. So Henry Cooper. <laughs> it was so good because every was single was element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu. I've got the program here, and the menu, right? The pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, right. when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut, <laughs> like, like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you had did to you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like you'd do that. You'd do your um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Can you ever do that? <laughs> Still to come up, by the way. Um, we uh. Uh, with the education of Carl, last week he did, um, uh, Che Guevara. He did very, very well. well. Yeah. Before that, the week before that, he learned all about Rasputin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm. How does that go? Do, how do you reckon that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. It's, um, mm -hmm. they're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, things aren't going well, and they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. But I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think you can, I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara. It's the same thing. Of... Che Guevara, when he was a kid, yeah. had, like, asthma, mm -hmm. right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he, uh... Um, he only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah. Seriously, he phoned me up in the week. I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it, I've just skimmed it. I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out, or it's not true. Right. Which, so which he was, he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you look? Did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles? Testicles absence of. Sort of skim through, because- <laughs> One of. It, yeah. Mother, mother, brackets other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in, in like, when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on, and somebody had put a bag in a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah. yeah. And but I'm the wondering table whether it was under him. the table. Yeah, but- what you're wondering if it blew a testicle? It was, it was, what well, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top, and so that's where he could have lost- But why would he only just lost the one? Uh, because the- The way he was sitting. <laughs> Cross-legged or something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, again, again, if, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert phoned up, maybe they could, uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could, uh, maybe phone up and confirm the, uh, the testicle, uh, yeah. theory. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm no. talking about someone who's done a study of him and who's done a PhD. Oh, okay. I'm not talking All about right. any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it. And I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no, even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on, more on the right lines there. <laughs> is there is anyone who, um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A-level maths that can bear- Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks, 
I was trying to- I, I know I was tr uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is- th the- the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but than any other indiv individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. You, I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any named it combination- It's not, Carl. If there's a, a probability- well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it, it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number there's of combinations a, that have never, never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up yeah. have happened, and they're just as likely or unlikely as any other combination, right? Yeah. It's just that you feel intuitively, right, that one, two, three, four, five, six are l is less likely than one, seven, twelve, thirty-four, sixty. You know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. <laughs> there we <record>. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, do you know uh, what St. Patrick did? Why he was revered as a saint and everything? What was he famous for in Ireland? He did. He rid Ireland of something. I don't know, but I bet he started off with something odd happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> what you think he had asthma or something as a kid? They <laughs> all, all do. Uh, and he took it out on what though? What did he do? exactly? He took it out on something. What did he do? What did he rid Ireland of? Uh. St. Patrick. St. Patrick. This is why we're gonna get crazy and drunk tomorrow. This is why we're all so happy to celebrate his, uh, anniversary or whatever it is yes. we're celebrating. This is that's why, why we- That's why we have a crack. Yeah, this is why we don't bother to celebrate, you know, the birthdays of James Joyce, you know, one of the great novelists of this century, or Samuel Beckett, one of the great playwrights. We actually celebrate this man, St. Patrick, the man oh, who I did don't, what? Oh, I don't- don't diss him. He, he did a good job of it as well, because there's none there now. There are none of these in Ireland. So- mm. He rid Ireland of something. Come on, Carl. Think of something. Just give us an answer. What's he went round on a horse whacking them and He went on a horse whacking them. Yeah. yeah. What was it, Carl? What did he rid Ireland of? Went on a horse. Foxes. I don't well, know. No, you're no, on the right lines. On the right lines. Um It was an animal. Oh Bears. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes it was. <laughs> yes it was bears. <laughs> yeah, wow. It was snakes. Right. And there are no snakes in He Ireland. rid Ireland of all the snakes. Yeah. Who did it here then? Because there isn't that many. <coughs> well, I think he, he had a- he had a stab at it over here as well, but got tired and went back. Yeah. That's why there's it's, just a few snakes here. Is, is it true that, that there are no snakes in Ireland? I think it is. I think if, it, if someone called it- And what is there- is there any historical evidence for St. Patrick ridding them of- I mean, how did he do it? Was it like the Pied Piper? See, I-, I I'm not convinced that- he did go around because there were snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think he's now. If someone knows he's now, we were someone just. Uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths graduates confirming that indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls, which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, but coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done Rasputin, and he's done Che Guevara. Plus, of course, uh, White Van Carl, where we White asked Van Carl, Carl some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learned as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there. Yeah. That was thrown in for free. That was an extra- I I'll learn you something, eh? Snakes. Well, I'll- sorry, can I just stop you there and I'll teach you something, right? Oh, go on then. You don't learn someone something, you teach them something. Yeah. It's- it's not it, it- it- one's passive. You- you- you, you learn- you? Ricky, I'm or, sorry mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> it's like- it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly. Because there's so many errors that you're making, it's like- where to start with you? <laughs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes. Yeah. For, a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a it's like a- <laughs> Familiar type thing that's n that happens to snakes. Okay, yeah. they take it for granted, don't they? Right, snakes born two heads. They'll fight each other for food, even though it's going in the same body. Isn't that weird? Mm. Were there kids at school that you went? <laughs> <laughs> who had two heads? The snake that? twins yeah. from Mosley. Oh, was, it, was, it, was there? There was kids at your school with two heads. Was that right? What? No, no. They had, they big had heads. big heads. Oh, they had big heads and webbed hands, but they right. weren't related, and they they weren't friends because that would have been too obvious. Yeah. He said. Yeah. Oh, oh, Steve, listen. Before you came in, right? 
I sneezed a couple of times. And if I'm allergic, I've still got a bit of a cold. And I said, like, oh, God, he went, he went, bloody hell. I was like, sorry. And he went, and he went, you know you can't sneeze with your eyes open. I went, yeah, yeah. And then he was obviously thinking to himself still. And after a pause, he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I started laughing. He went, no, because that, has anyone ever done that, do you think? <laughs> has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then, and then he went, uh, put, uh, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> Are you reading a the book there? No, I was just reading the, um, the, uh, brochure there, the, uh, programme, if you will, for the, uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we, we, we lost. Mm. Oh, we we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. The best comedy. But uh, you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 when his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I noticed it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't, we've got to say by surprise from behind. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn, Follow Me, I'm Right Behind You, and Eat Like a Horse, Drink Like a Fish. Does it but mention Celebrity s Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did, um, the Crosswits. name that tune. Well, that's right. Um, I was. Well, it's uh, Crosswits. Do you remember Crosswits? It, it was, was from the eighties. It was like a crossword game oh, show. It was yeah. often with um, Kate Copstick. But <laughs> I saw one right. It was on. The, it was on Challenge uh, TV. Being repeated. And no, Andy Crane. Remember Andy Crane? Yeah. He was on the. He was the uh, link man, and he went coming up next. Uh, Tom O'Connor with uh, uh, Crosswits. With uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best Crosswits players of all time, John Junkin. <laughs> 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 Who's your favourite Crosswits player? Uh, it's got to be Junkin for me as well. But Copstick was Barry all right. Cryer's bloody good. Though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff um, uh, in the week. Is this with Toxic and uh, yeah, Cryer? Yeah, it was. It was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I you could get on there if you want. I used to watch it with um, what's his name? Frank Muir. <laughs> yeah, Frank Muir. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was great. You're impression. brilliant impressions because obviously I, while Bowie was playing, you were doing your infamous Bowie impression, which is th the best one you do actually. Well, that's just because Carl said, "You know what?" He said, "I'd love to go out for a drink with David Bowie. I have all the people that come in here for sessions. I think he's really good him." And I said, "I think he'd like you as well." That's all. And I just went, "Hello, Carl. You're strange. You're alien. It interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on them." Yeah, I just imagine you and Bowie in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> if we uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is you know likely, yeah, uh, considering we're, we're now talking about no, Ian we Canfield's ran out of it at five past one. Exactly. But could we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie? Yeah, in a sort of humorous sketch. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if like David Bowie was you know a cab driver? What well, would he say? What was some well, of the funny the, things he would we say? We saw that. Um, that what was that in when it said uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what uh, yeah, it did, would did sound you see like, this, De Dead Ringers is this impressionist show. They did a, it's on Radio Four. And they did a TV version. Yeah, I saw it. What did you make of it? I didn't like it. It was all right. No, it was just that the write up in uh, the Radio Times. Magazine, I think it was. The Radio Times said, uh, "Ever wondered what it'd be like if uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby?" Or what would it be like if uh, there was an I think animal it was, hospital was, was hosted was by uh, Anne Robinson? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I actually, you know, I have. I have wondered. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, <laughs> we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. Noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> <a good one. laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah. What's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello? What's going on here? <laughs> 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 oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't no, I'm not familiar with this feature. Basically, uh, The Sun runs a white van man column where, um, it asks, uh, just people who, you know, every kind of, every, every men and women, their views on, uh, news stories from the week, and, uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week- Not like um, us to rip off another idea and just use no, it for no, our no, own- no, 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 but this time- The yeah. white van man in The Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow in Middlesex. Um- Herbie. And he's been as he's asked, a, asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours, on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay. 
Come um, on, Carl. It's... I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is... is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right? And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into, uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now... And her kids You're not gonna tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's, you know, a, a leather. Yeah. Right? Mm. I wouldn't say, right, that's it, I'm taking kids in America back to the shop, I'm disgusted. Sure. I liked her. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm ever gonna, like, meet her and, and marry her and that, so what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, if he's a good voice, he's gay, you know, a lot of gay people in the world. Georgie boy was gay, I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So Do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Killing a Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, before you say. Right, wh what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well the police have, uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, try and get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy see. helmets anymore. <laughs> yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their, um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted, they get a lot of bad press, they're not being paid well, they they're only resourced. Exactly. They, they actually, um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside I think somewhere. they may have done, yeah. yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What but do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at- That's they were looking I, for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Did a Sherman tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? <sighs> what, you concerned? What, what are the signs? <coughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure, I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe? She'll be alright. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it, I don't even think about her now. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over <laughs> Zoe? Zoe Harris! How long did it take <laughs> you to- To be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends, and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I remember- <laughs> A good reason I that, I love that. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her, and then, the <laughs> bit that really got me- I thought I half liked her, and then I remember, right, we're at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> infant <laughs> school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, it's on the cusp. Yeah. Right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. yeah. And, um, she was crying because- You were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> she was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh well, well, she, had you she stolen her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You, <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap? I just think of him at like, six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald. Going, for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> Oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it, because all her mates were saying, come on, Carl, she's upset, and I was like, oh, whatever. So <laughs> <I'm sorry again. laughs> Hold on, though, wait a minute, what do you mean all her mates were saying, like, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying, help her out. And, like, and you did nothing? I don't know. She got injured. <laughs> got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset and you were her boyfriend. Oh, well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where no, were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. That's why it didn't work out, he said. <laughs> I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings? Current, his current yeah. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, she didn't So as far as she? you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, if she's gonna make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole, screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and give her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. It's we a were, wood. We were playing dead arm. <laughs> <laughs> In the corner. I was giving another oh, question. Okay, very final oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should 
pra- paper has been able to print tittle tattle about celebrities. Oh, this is providing it's proven true. Oh, this, this is something about isn't it a Division One football or something? It's definitely had a, a, a Premiership football as unfair, and it is true. But he's trying to keep privacy, and the judge said, "Well, it's not for us to censor the press over things that are true. Right. It's up to the general public to either boycott or not." you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it? But no. people are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it, do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has a go at Beckham for not being that bright, but at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. It doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, but what if you were I a celebrity really. and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. Yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah, I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I won't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? <laughs> Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like, kind of headbutting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it was do. with people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. All right. Oh, and mates. Right. So okay. you were playing dead arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. And you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Well, I think I'd just better ask, um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can, uh, we can, you know, get on with our lives. Okay, yeah, we can tick that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that, uh, uh oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Okay, put that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's week, it's, it's week three of his education. We've, you've nailed Rasputin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I'll, I'll maybe, um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, so keep your, your mind on it. But Hitler. What, Tell what, us the story. What have you learnt? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up in a minute. What you, th- what, what I do you think? Can't do it in a minute. <laughs> well, uh, can I ask some questions then? Uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. <laughs> um, he, uh... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what, in his early life? <laughs> okay. Yeah. He, what's the name? His, his, um, his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> He's going, yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez, There's no cool. need for that. There Go was, on. uh, there was, there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including, uh, him and his sister survived, the others died at an early age. Okay. Right. right. Um, anyway, so, they grew up, and, um, the mum died and the dad died and that, and he thought, oh, what am I gonna do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right. And then, um, so he said, right, I'm gonna go out to Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff and just didn't like them. So he went to Munich and, um, he, uh, joined the army. Right. Yeah? Yeah. And, um... He was in the army, and he got injured. Right. So he went to hospital, and whilst he was in hospital, uh, the w- World War One ended, and he was like, "Oh God, I want to." I was join that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> don't, because you're breaking the concentration. Yeah, right? sorry. I, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right, go on. Right. So, um, so he was in hospital. World he was War in hospital. Ended. It gets a bit better. He's never that fit, though. He's one of these blokes who was always <laughs> ill. Uh, that was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. Right. Um, God, you know, I knew it all this morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going, I'm, the, I'm not nailed in the fact, am I? And joined a, another army and he was well, <laughs> astonishing. Listen, let's try to help you. So, here's, a good bit, here's a good bit, I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. Oh, right. Right? So it's like, um, <laughs> you know, you, you fight for nine months and at the end of it you own something, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, he, he goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And, uh, he's, he's you know, he's, he's, uh, 
he's fighting his way through, like, you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does, uh, does he do Berlin? Does he? <laughs> Sorry, oh, wait a minute. Is, is he, is he, uh, <laughs> is he Chancellor yet? Um, what year is it? Thirty-five. So let's what, skip, where let's you? skip the kind of climb to power. Then he's now he's now he's now the dictator of Germany. Right, he's in yeah. charge, yeah. And this is when you know he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's he's uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and and all this. And uh, anyway, cut a long story short. He uh, please do. He uh, when he came to like f fighting Britain. Yeah. Came a bit sort of uns unstuck. Yeah. Right? Started fighting. Not back. so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. Yeah. So, well, oh, God. So a bit he goes, late, but yeah, go he, on. Go he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like, Germany sort of surrenders. Yeah. Says it's all over, forget it, we can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this, and he thought, oh, I can't, I can't show my face around here. <laughs> so he, uh... He because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's, he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife, right? Eva, in this bunker. Yeah. And um, so uh, so he said, oh, "I've had enough of this." He shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> she poisons herself, and the chauffeur buries him or something, or burns him. Right. And uh, in all the time he was in charge, fifty million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between- It felt like that. Between- <laughs> Between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers. Next right. week. That's fantastic. That's remarkable. <laughs> I, I have to say that you, you, you sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line, because you started off confidently, but- you lost your I've had a really busy week, and last night I was like, whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning, I woke up, and you know, Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy. I've been busy. First thing to say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you are romantic. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. That's how stressful it's getting. But I knew it all this morning. Honestly. No, but that's that's fine. I think you've summed up the you know you've done that you right. Just, just for a bit of balance, um, I've got your next week's um, homework. It's the same same series. There's little books. There's tiny little books. Just three inches long by two inches wide. Crammed with so much information. Though. Winston Churchill. There you go. You'll enjoy that. Yeah. I, I'm getting a bit bored now, though. <laughs> this is what happened in school. Think of the listeners. Did really well in infants. <laughs> Once got to secondary, lost interest. Was it the breakup between <laughs> you and Harris <laughs> and Zoe? The, 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 wait, I'm the, wondering if yeah, you've <laughs> spiralled into something there. Yeah, because it, it, it's, it's like all these other. You know, these men, these men of history, they always had sort of things happen in their early childhood, didn't they? Maybe yeah. yours is the Zoe Harris, um, dress yeah. incident. Well, let's just refer to it as the Zoe incident. Yeah. From now on. Yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill, the bit I left out in the Hitler story, Hitler was scared of this man. Yeah. And I can tell you something else about Winston Churchill. Go on. Um, he said he can remember being in the womb. <laughs> and he was born in a public toilet. <laughs> Fly record. <laughs> um, Carl called me in the week, Steve. I know. Yes. I know we sort of ban each other from speaking to him. What you seem to have just disobeyed that rule. I, I can't believe it. I just can't resist it. But um, he said, uh, "Oh, just saw a program." He said, "What's that big balloon that blew up?" And the newsreader was going all mental. And I went. Is that the, the Hindenburg? He went, yeah. Oh, I said it was a, a big Zeppelin. He went, yeah. He went, what happened? I said, I said, well, he said it was helium, wasn't it? And I went, yeah. I said it was a big, just a huge Zeppelin full of helium. And what caused us? I don't know. It could be a spark or anything, but of course it just goes because it's helium so flammable. And he went, now they didn't show this in the documentary, but did all their voices go funny? <laughs> And I went, what? He went, well, no, even if you take a little bit of a little balloon of helium, your voice goes funny. So if that was, like, millions of gallons of it, and it blew up in the air, and you were, and it was in the atmosphere, you'd be carrying, you'd be talking like Donald Duck, he went. So, imagine that. God. And, they, and but I, what I liked about it, I said, this wasn't in the documentary. No. No, it was an oversight. Maybe just time was against him, they didn't have time to explain Just like that, that, but that book about Hitler didn't have his one ball incident. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's annoyed me, that. What? What is? The old Hitler book. Why? Just, just because I, I knew it all. Do you know what I mean? I was cycling in today. I was like, yeah, going through it all again. Yeah. Had it all in my head. But that's why you should know some, as opposed to just cram and have a piece of trivia that's, that's pre precariously sort of teetering on the edge. But why don't I understand? You know what I mean? It's, it's, you, it's, it's, it's well, you're not interested by it. That's what I mean. It's one of the most you know, fascinating things. I you, am, you know all about things you're interested. in, You never forget them, do you? You know. Yeah, I, I was a bit interested in it, but 
like I say, I mean, I'm cramming all this in, in into a, a normal week. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You go on and, you know, you watch telly and that in the week, you've got loads of leisurely time. I'm sort of using the only little bit of rest time I have to learn, as well as trying to do all my other stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he texted me yesterday about Hitler. He went, he went, stop making me read this heavy shit. He said, I've seen in the back of this book, there's one on Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is, it is interesting, but not when you have to read it, do you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's but do you think you'd have read time. it in your leisure time? To be honest? No, you wouldn't no, have. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no. No, what do you do in your leisure time? Um, I like, you know, going f out for food and that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Foraging. What do you mean going out yeah. for food? They like, come have a little yeah. hole and go, <laughs> go hunting. Mm. Yeah. This is Carl. He's hungry. He knows he has to get to the greasy spoon by eleven. Wow. 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 Many of he Carl's close friends have never made it across this road. <laughs> there was a zebra crossing installed just for the safety of Carl. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Uh, can I have a bacon butty into Carl is enjoying his Wow, <laughs> but he has to get back. <laughs> His girlfriend's asked for one as well. <laughs> She's home with a PlayStation too. <laughs> wow. Oh. Beep. <laughs> All right, Beep. Rick. It was David Bowie impressions earlier. Now it's just a selection of crazy sound effects, like that guy you in Police you Academy. Some. You said you wanted some. He hasn't got time to make them up. He's reading about Hitler. You heard him. Do a machine we've, gun or a helicopter. We've, we've, got, we've got to do all our own sound effects. Oh. oh. So do you want to do you want a week off? Do you not want to learn about Winston Churchill? Why don't you read it if you want to, and just uh, if you if you get ex interested, then read on. I think that's because that's what I did with school, and it didn't work. <laughs> no, you decided you didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So but hasn't that hasn't that taught you something? <laughs> can't we just do it like a TV series? It doesn't go on forever. We've done three weeks. Give it a rest now for the for like the summer. Yeah, because most series last for three weeks. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah. Okay. What What's your favourite subject in the world? What's your favourite thing in the world? Um, I would have said, um, what, at school, like? No, just, just in, in, in life. life. What's, what are you interested in? Like, I like little interesting bits, like, <laughs> um... <laughs> Sentences. Atlantic Ocean. It's got 17 quadril quadrillion gallons of water in it. Right. Well, that's that's interesting. Without having to read a book. Well, why is that interesting, though? What what are you basing that on? What, what when you when you think of seventeen quadrillion? It's a lot, what, isn't it? What are you imagining? Just like a big wave. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> how much water. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's your subject then? <laughs> I don't know. No, it's just that that Wilson was your favourite subject. You gave me a fact <laughs> that is so. Well, but that, this, that sort of thing. Like I said to you before, you were talking about monkeys. And I said, do you know that if you give a monkey a childbirth tablet, it works on it the same way, because it's, it's kitted out the same Could way. Could I just say something? We weren't talking about monkeys. What were we talking about then? You no, know, we were talking about something completely different, and you went, if you give a monkey a childbirth bill, it works. That's what you said. No, we were talking about monkeys. We were, we were talking about sneezing. Yeah. Yeah, and you went, if you give a monkey childbirth pills, it works. That's, that's, that's... Well, we're yeah, well, we're talking about interesting things about sneezing, <laughs> and I remembered an interesting fact about monkeys. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, um, half past two, brilliant. Um, oh. What did happen to that bloke who used to make the sound effects in Police Academy? I don't know. He was brilliant, wasn't he? Do you remember him? I don't remember. Was him. he called Hightower? Yeah, he was good. Yeah. If yeah. anyone knows, give us a call. <laughs> 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 We've had a number of calls and emails yeah. pointing out that the Hindenburg disaster was not because the ze Zeppelin was filled with helium, hydrogen. but filled with hydrogen. Oh, right, okay. Well, I thought about that when he told me in the well, week. Yeah, but, but I assumed he must have got that off from the do documentary, so it just it just went up. So that's that's probably why the the voices didn't go. That funny. was probably why it didn't feature in the documentary. Yeah, but it seems to me we should have thought of that. I mean, like it's school fates and stuff where they're like filling little balloons with helium. Yeah, you know there'd be all kinds of horror stories if they were just you know just blowing up you know left right and centre. I don't think you can just blow helium up like that, can you? What? Isn't that the point? What well, I'm saying is it's not. It's, it can't be as potentially lethal as hydrogen, helium. Well, what hydrogen isn't as bad as helium? No, helium's not as bad as hydrogen. I don't know what you're saying because that, that Hindenburg was hydrogen. Yeah, and I'm saying, why did we think it was helium? That's crazy. You go to fates, school fates and stuff with like little kids, and they're filling up little balloons with helium. They wouldn't have big canisters of helium, you know, a, a charity event or a, you know, a small kind of bring and buy sale if it was deadly. Yeah, but it's not as big. I mean, when you buy those balloons at a fair, it's not as big as that. Uh, 
that, that big But presumably balloon. it's still flammable, is it? But it wasn't, it wasn't the fact how dangerous the, the rare gas was, or the, the, it was the fact that, um, it was made of this thing that caught fire and just went, there was nothing, a hole in it would have been as bad. It just, it just burnt quickly and fell to the ground because the hydrogen or helium escaped. It wasn't, it was irrelevant that, what, what the gas was, wasn't it? I thought Honestly. it was that there was supposed to be some kind of explosion. Well, I don't know what it was, but the point is because the outer thing was so thin, right, the, the gas inside escaped and it fell to the so ground. So it just fell to the ground like one of the, like when you've popped a balloon? Mm. Well, not, not, not It didn't quite. sort of go <laughs> It didn't like flap all over no. the place and make a zany noise. But I tell you what, because when I was looking on the internet in the week f for it, I was like trying to get a bit more info on it. Guess how many balloons it would take, <laughs> helium balloons, to lift a human up? <laughs> Go on. 6,000. Should we do it? If you want. Brilliant. Next week, that's got to be a challenge. Can we, can we, is, if, is there a sort of balloon company or, or, or some sort of, you know, uh, party company that are willing to sponsor us to lift Carl <laughs> into the air right. with helium balloons? Ten feet off the ground, where we're tethering him down, right? Is there someone willing to pay for 6,000 balloons to try and lift We can maybe up? get some kind of company to sponsor it. I'm thinking like Electrolux, if they're going to sponsor puddings. If they're going to sponsor puddings, uh, you know, and, uh, 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 celebrities, Russ Abbott, they will sponsor Carl being lift- Heat Magazine, Heat Magazine, come on. They're a big selling, very successful magazine there, and they'd know about Carl because they've mentioned him. Heat Magazine, can we have a heat balloon? Yeah? Oh, six Carl, thousand's it, an awful into lot. Into the air, six. Th yeah, it's the heat. Sa six thousand Carl challenge. Lift Carl ten feet into the air. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> no, I, I just explain what I'm laughing at. Right? Uh, we just had a call um, from someone saying his company would sponsor Carl, right, to be raised by all these balloons if he could have a walk on part in the office. And, uh, uh, we immediately went, oh, we're worried about that sort of thing. You can't really promise that artistic, you know. And I was worried about the legality of it as well. How can you promise someone that for personal gain that's a private, and all that sort of stuff, right? And I went, oh, I don't know. And anyway, put the phone down to him, and Carl went, <laughs> I love the fact you're more effing worried about that than me being raised 30 feet in the effing air. <laughs> <laughs> you started getting scared, did you? Are you worried about it? Well, You're quite excited uh, about the idea of the challenge, aren't you? I like the idea, but I want, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like the idea, Carl? Oh, what if it went all wrong and we're there going, Oh, the humanity of it! I think we need Carl to get... Carl is just, he's just... <laughs> turned... And the rope would pull out my trousers and... <laughs> 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 oh, no, it's definitely got to be Dr. Fox if that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, God! Oh, we've got to do this! So hang on, but let's just no. think about the, because wait a minute, we, I mean we say this, but we'd have to get all kinds of health and safety people involved. No, we, no we wouldn't. Of course we can't! <laughs> just like in the air. No, you're allowed to do it on private land, aren't you? Not what happened to the Hindenburg! No, but that was, there was, I was just <laughs> saying, there was lots of people died. <laughs> Listen, look, all we do is we get, all, we get someone right. But what if, what if he, go, he gets loose and he just floats off into the air? <laughs> no, he never, and he meets his magpie that he lost. He yeah, used to peck his grifter. <laughs> So, oh, I'm sorry, on, sorry, no, so listen, we've got to do this. No, but Please. Just have a minute. Let's no. just stop and think about it. It's right. 60,000 balloons. balloons. No, no it's it not. It's 6,000. 6, but 6,000 balloons are a lot of balloons. No, it's not. No, no, oh, it's don't not. Be silly. For 6, sponsorship, 000. people pay for. Uh, no, listen, it's worth it. There must be a company out there that are paying for this just so we can film Hang it. Hang on, is there not an easier way of just getting <laughs> one big balloon? Then <laughs> the challenge is no. There's no challenge. There. No, it's yeah, got to be. It's got our people coming up and hooking balloons. It'd be like Buckaroo. And the person who puts the balloon that actually raises him 10 feet wins a prize or something. So hang no. on, so what we've got, we've got each person with like oh. 500 balloons. Yeah. That's mad, can you imagine how many balloons that is? That's ludicrous. 6,000? Yeah. That's an awful lot of balloons. I don't know, you'd, uh, what, we'd, there must be someone that, that, that could do this. Oh look, people have walked on the moon for Christ's sake, we can raise Carl Pilkington with some balloons. Yes, but they had a NASA budget, we've got XFM behind us. Yeah, balloons, <laughs> yeah. balloons are cheap, you can get about a pack of 25 for about 150. <laughs> right, fine. <laughs> no, True. Yeah, the helium though, Carl, you can't just like attach yourself to a pack of balloons. No, but... Oh. What, you think we blow them all up? With helium. Right. Oh. Off you go. But then we can do something with the balloons, can't we? Like, release them afterwards. Oh, yeah. we'll release them back into the wild. <laughs> Brilliant. As a sign of peace. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> fly, my British fly. Listen, be free. I am so excited. I have not been so excited about and, and when I thought that Robin Ince was going to stay in my cupboard for a thousand pounds. Look, we've got to, we've got to do six thousand balloons. I don't think it's going to happen. That's an awful lot of balloons, and I just don't oh. think I don't see how we can tether them all to Carl. He's a small man. No, but because you know about different lengths, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Carl knows. Can you uh, think about the logistics of this? Oh, someone must know. There must be a couple of- there's a bloke willing to do it. I, I know he doesn't know the technology of it, he's willing to sort of stand by- And that's a company just on, has we, access to helium like that. No, we can do this, come on. London. And someone's done Londoners. it. It was on the internet already, so someone obviously has done it. Yeah. So they didn't say, oh, we can't get all the balloons. No, they probably worked it out, didn't they? Must I can't- Carl, you're oh. more excited about this than anything else, about your education, about your exam Why results. You're so exciting. exciting. And, we, and we'll have a little rope, it'll be like flying a little kite, a little Carl. We're like, let's go and fly Carl, what will you wear, like a one-piece jumpsuit? Yeah, I mean, look, with sponsorship all over it. Oh, it'd be yeah. great. You look like Jackie Stewart, and just as you go up your little face, oh my god, I'm not going to sleep until this is done. This is the most exciting thing ever. Only ten feet. Ten feet, yeah. And we need tethier. some. We need some kind of rope to sort of tether you to the ground. Yeah. We don't want you sort of flying <laughs> off. This is going to be great. And you'd have a little crash helmet and everything, and little Deedee boppers on the crash helmet, like yeah. it's a little flying ant. Definitely, definitely. We give him a little. Oh my god, can we give you an outfit like little wings and everything? Can oh. we paint your face with like children's no, paint? I'm not yeah. Doing all that. Why? Oh, because no, that would be silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, Carl, do this. Do it. We do it for charity. We do it for charity. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is. We'll do it for brilliant. children in need. Please, just phone in if you got if you can help us lift Carl up thirty feet. Let's say thirty. I think feet. it has to be a decent. Yeah, yeah. It has to be a decent. Well, height. is there a world record? Because we want to break that. If we're gonna yeah, we want to break that. What is the world record for raising a man by balloons? <laughs> Um, our friend Johnny Mango called again, and uh, apparently the record's 11,000 feet. Carl is getting a little bit nervous. Yeah, the, the world record is 11,631 feet raised by hot air balloons. How, yeah. how tall's uh, Canary Wharf? It's 11,631 feet. Exactly. What's I don't know, Carl. Is it how much higher? It's a long way. A lot, a, a more. Yeah, I'm not doing lot, that. Because I'm like six foot something. Yeah, think of that. Let's just look at Steve. All right. Yeah. But you can change a record. You could say, well, the sort of balloons are the one with, with Mickey Mouse on it or something. Yeah, could I just say, could I just say something? That man did 11,000 feet, but he wasn't naked. <laughs> All right? Come on, Carl. You be the- your 30 feet will be the world record for naked ballooning. Yeah? Mm. Think about it. All right, it's for charity. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. We are going to raise Carl. We are going to raise Carl. And after after uh, Carl said, and just to think, my teacher said I'd never be a high flyer. So this is your chance, Carl, to shine, to fly. It'll be brilliant. <laughs>